Hi there. Over the last lectures, together we built a beautiful website that you can be really proud of. It looks really great on a computer so far. But we also want it to look great on other devices with smaller screens, right? And as you know, this is where responsive web design comes in. So far, we built our entire layout with a fluid grid. And now it's time to take care of media queries to make our website truly responsive, to make it shine across all devices. So this is how our website will look on four different screen sizes. Basically, as the screen gets smaller, our content also gets smaller and we have less white space, so that the website can be seen on a mobile phone or tablet. So, media queries are what will enable our website to call different CSS style declarations based on the current browser width or the width of a mobile device that displays our site. These media queries will trigger at different breakpoints. And breakpoints are screen width at which we want our website to change the way it looks in order to look good on all devices. The standard breakpoints are for tablet and for mobile. On this diagram here, you can see some possible breakpoints. And we will define our media queries for exactly those breakpoints. When you're just starting out, the easiest way to define breakpoints is to use divides with from popular devices like the iPhone or the iPad. That is what we're going to do. However, once you got more experience, you should set your breakpoints simply at points where your design starts to look kind of terrible. So now let's see how we can define those breakpoints with media queries in CSS. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new file where I will put the media queries. So hit new file and save it to our CSS folder. And I'm going to name it queries.css. All right, so this is our CSS file. And now let's start to put our media queries here. So I will start with the smallest one. And this is how we do it. So media, and then we say only screen. And, and now we define our max width. And we say this should be 480 pixels. And then all our styles go inside of this declaration block. So what this means is that these rules, which will come in here, will apply when the width of the device or the browser is less or equal than 480 pixels. And this is the width of the old iPhones, like the iPhone 5, iPhone 4, and so on. So I'm actually going to put a comment in here to say that, so that we can come here later and don't get lost in our code. So this is for small phones from 0 to 480 pixels. Okay, next we will make a media query for larger small phones. And let me just copy this because I'm kind of lazy here, don't want to write it all again. Okay, and this will be 767 pixels. And this again means that the rules that will be in this block here will apply for all the browser widths uh, which are less or equal to 767. And this value is because of the, the width of the iPad is 768. So we want this media query to target all the phones which are smaller than the iPad. And then the next media query will target the iPad and of course other tablets as well. I'm just going with the iPad and the iPhone because you know those are the most popular devices. 
So I will say small font to small tablet. Because you know there are maybe some tablets with 700 pixels width or something like that. So we target them as well here. So this means from 400, 481 to 767 pixels, right? So, and now I will put another query here. And this one is 1023. And so this will target the iPad in the portrait mode, which has 768 pixels. And again, the reason for this value here is that the, the iPad in the landscape view has 1024 pixels. So that will be in the next media query. So let me write it right here. So this goes from small tablet to big tablet. So from 768 pixels, which is the iPad, to 10, 23 pixels. And now the last one, which will then target like the iPad in all smaller like, computers. And I will define this as 1200. And the reason for this is that our, our row that you surely remember was defined as 1140 pixels. And so I want the website to change its look when it gets close to that value. So that we always have some margins at the right and the left side. But I will show you that in a moment. So don't worry about that right now. I will just say here that this is from big tablet to 1300 pixels, which is for width smaller than pixel row. All right. So these are our media queries right here. In these media queries, we can then define all our styles. Let me just close this one here as well, this block. All right. So in case that you're a little confused right now, uh, just go back to the initial part of the video where I had that diagram. And there you can exactly see how these media queries work. That diagram does a really great job in explaining this. So one thing that I need to do right now, as you can imagine, is to actually include this file here in our head. So I will duplicate this line and then include the queries file. Because if I wouldn't do this, of course, all of this wouldn't work. Also here in the head, I need to include another thing that is essential when you make responsive web design and it's this meta tag. We will talk about meta tags later in the course, but for now let's just put it right here. And we need a viewport one. And what we want to say here is that with equals device with and initial scale equals 1.0. So all that this will do is to tell uh, mobile phones, for instance, that they should not zoom out the page. So that they should always start with the scale of one, which is exactly this here. And all right, now I think we're ready to start writing some CSS inside of those media queries. So how are we gonna proceed now? We will basically for each breakpoint uh, view the page and then fix everything that looks broken. So let's start to reduce the browser's width. 
So again, this is what it looks like in the normal way. And actually, the best thing to do now is to not use this live connection, but open the HTML file directly because we will need the Google Chrome developer tools. So let me do that. And here we are. And the reason why we need the developer tools is actually because of this here. When we resize the window, this shows us how the size of the window. So you remember our first breakpoint was 1200, which is here. And I will now show you, show you why, because imagine it wouldn't be. Then you see what happened to the text there on the left side. It just disappears, right? So 1140 is the width of the row and of the text box but then the text would be completely glued to the border of the browser and we don't want that and also here so that's why I choose the 1200 value here so let's see what we can change here so this box here is the hero text box so let's go to the original definition of this in the header part and let's see what we can do with this. So I will now go ahead and copy all of this into here and then I will change the things that I want to change here. So now I don't want the width to be fixed anymore, I just want it to be 100%. So I don't want to change nothing of this and nothing of this. And in order to create some space then between the text and the border of the browser, I will say that I want the padding to be zero on the top and the bottom and 2% on left and the right side. So now let's see what this looks like. We don't need to save it because we have dot autosave extension but we will now have to reload this because we're no longer working with the live connection. So this is the 100 to 1000 limit and let's see what happens. Okay and this is kind of cool right? Look at the text just. So now that effect that we had before no longer happens. So our width is 100% and we can see that here in the developer tools. So we actually have that rule here and we see the width is 100%. Now if we make that bigger then that rule goes away because the media query does no longer apply. So very well. But what we see now here is that this text is still completely uh, glued here to the browser border. And let me check that HTML, but I think it's inside of a row. Yeah, it actually is. So now I will define something for the row class and for all rows. And I'm going to say the same thing as I said up there. So I want a padding and in order to make this look consistent I will use the same padding value. And I'm now going to format this a little bit different than from what I've done before because every time we only have one declaration in a block uh, we don't need to create all of those lines. And we should actually do the same here like here for instance, but I'm not going to do that. But if you want to have a... But if you want your code to look cleaner, then you should go ahead and do that. So again, let's check that out. I'll refresh it. Oh, and now you saw that instantly that we now have this margin here or this padding. 
And the same thing happens down here actually because all of these are rows and so we always have that distance here. Okay, great. Okay, we actually see something really strange here happening. This is because we opened the file now and not the browser connection, so something changed. So let me change. So hello world Omnifood. You see what's going wrong here? So it's this. We need to replace this. All right. I think that's it for now. Here's also I'm hungry. Okay. So let's see what we have next. So this is our next media query, which goes from 768 to 1023. Let's check this out in the browser. Okay, again we need the developer tools to see the width. So let's go to 768. Okay, this will be our tablet. So let's see what we should change here. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is to change the font size, the overall font size. So body, font size. And now it comes in very, very handy that we defined all the font sizes across the entire web page in percentages, which means that all the font sizes are based on the base font size. So this was 20 and now I will make it down to 18 pixels and now all the font sizes will automatically decrease. And this is incredibly useful. And another thing that we should surely do since we're now on smaller devices is to change the padding of the sections and this was 80 pixels top and bottom and I will take it down to 60 pixels. Of course I have to write the padding here. All right. So let me check this out. Resize this. Okay, you see the text is smaller and I think it definitely looks more adequate to this device or to this browser width. And yeah, we have less space between the sections, which also makes a lot of sense. When you're on an iPad, you don't want to scroll th through a website and see nothing but white space, right? So what else can we do now? For instance, this text here can be wider now. It looks kind of weird now. So you remember, let me, let me check, it was the long copy class, which is actually an overall class. Here it is. So let's change this. And again, I will copy all of this and then change the things that I want to change. So line height can stay the same, but the width can now be 80% and therefore the left margin needs to be 10 because 10 plus 10 makes 20 and 20 plus 80 makes the 100%. All right. Save this and great. So again, this is now really designing in the browser. We're gonna check everything and see which doesn't look right and then fix it. So now that you know how to work with media queries and build truly responsive websites, let's take a small break and continue with what we're doing in the next lecture. In this lecture, we'll continue to make our website responsive. So the next thing we can do here is to remove some white space for instance, here 
and tear between those steps and tear between the steps and the button. And we will also increase this image a little bit. And so let's go do that. And we're still here at this media screen, which will target from small tablets to big tablets. All right, so we can start with the steps box. And let's say that it should have a margin top to only 10 pixels now. So I'm, as I said, starting to remove some of the white space here. So I also have the works steps, right? And I will say that I want the margin button to be 40 pixels. I think it was 50, if I remember it correctly. But let's check it. So form, how it works section, okay. So the steps box had 30 and 70 and now I'm going to set them to 10. And I will actually have to do this for the steps box last child as well. Okay, so the work steps had a margin bottom here of 50. And I will have to set this one here as well. So let me copy this. And I also need the steps box last child, right? So this may be a little confusing because, you know, it's a lot of code we have to change here. So if you want, you can then later review the code a little more slowly. So I want this to be 10 pixels as well. And now between the last step and those buttons, I will say 60 pixels should be enough. And I will also now decrease the app screen, which is the image. And I want a width of 50%. So increase it from 40% to 50%. See, it was 40, now it will be 50. Okay, I'm gonna reload this thing now. Well, this looks much better, right? Let's resize it. Okay, so here we have our breakpoint at 1023. Well, this is how it looks like. And as we get it smaller, So this is the other breakpoint. Okay. So this section looks good now. And now we have a little problem in here because those icons are way too wide. So let's go back and reduce their width. And also I should actually decrease the font size in here So those icons are icon small class. So let me check them. So they had the width of 30 pixels. And I will decrease that to so let's say 20 pixels. And then the city future class. I will decrease its font size to 90%. And let's reload this. And this looks much better. So there's still like a line break here on some smaller width, like this one here. So I'm going to decrease it even more. So 17, for instance, and let me check it again. This margin right can be set to 5 pixels. 
So you see I'm changing a lot of stuff here. And yeah, I'm doing that because it really is important to make our websites look good on any device and on any width. So this didn't change so much actually, but well, it's the best we can get, right? So in here everything looks okay. You know, so these boxes have a width of 90% and a margin left of 5% to center them. So I'm going to change that down here. And these are called plan box. And so let's change now the width and say 100% and the margin left to 0%. Let's check it. It's better. And now let's decrease these font sizes here. And there's also some weird thing going on again with the HTML. So I'm also going to fix that. But let's start by reducing the font size here of this. And that is the plan price, right? I'm actually going to copy this one and put it here and let's say 250 percent so the code is getting much bigger and it's not always easy to find the stuff that we want to edit right Okay, that is the problem. It's this that. All right. So, all right. And now, just let's uh, increase the width of this contact form class as well. Contact form. And 80%. So we still don't want it to be full width, but a little wider is better. All right. So this looks good now. So we fixed everything in this media query here. So now let's get to the next one. And this one is for small phones to small tablets. For instance, the iPhone 6. So I will put the browser to this lowest width of 481 or 480. So you see the width up there and 480 is absolutely very small. Let's say like 500, close to 500. So a lot of things going on here. All of this looks quite bad right now, right? So that's what I mean. We need, really need to adapt this. Look at this button. And you also notice a strange thing here, which is this here. So now we have this uh, problem because some of the text goes out of the actual width. So let us fix that and it's easy to do. We just need to add a new style here which is overflow x and then hidden. So now that will get hidden and we actually should do the same for the body and we can actually add body here. It's, it's not such a big difference. So now that will be fixed, the problem as well. So let's go back to our queries and start adding some code into this media query here. So I'll start by reducing the body font size even more to now 16 pixels. And the section, I will reduce the padding between those 
so the white space between those which we set to 60 before but now we have really small devices so let's say 30 pixels and 0 and now the padding at rows we set that before I think yeah to 2% but let's set it to 4% now so row and also this box this hero text box this is equally important in the header so let's set their padding on the left and the right side so zero and top and bottom and four percent at left and right and before we go check how this looks we can do one last thing and this is that we now want to define the width of all the columns as 100 percent which means that the columns will no longer be side by side but will be stacked on top of each other so let's see what that looks like all right here we go still have this problem here I'm going to talk about it in a second so this is what I'm this is what I was talking about those are now on top of each other right here we have some weird stuff going on I'm going to fix that in a second those images are way too large and down here everything looks quite good but yeah one thing after the not the other so I'm first going to fix this navigation and in fact we're going to build a mobile navigation in the next section where we will start learning some jQuery and so for now I'm just going to hide all of the navigation and that's pretty easy to do actually I will just say main nav display none and this will hide the entire navigation all right the class name Okay, that looks better for now. So I'm not going to change every little detail here now because you know you can do that later on yourself. I'm just going to fix the most important thing now, which is for instance this margin here. So I now want this paragraph to be 100% wide as well. So this is one of the things that I'm going to change then we can probably make these h2 elements a little bit smaller and the h1 element as well and then uh, take away some more white space here from this section will also be important and i think down here most of the things look pretty good so no need all this space here we already had changed the long copy here but now I'm gonna go even further and say 100% and margin 0% right, and as I said I will also reduce the font size of the h1 element so font size let me say 180% and I will duplicate this for the h2 element and reduce the size to 150 percent okay and now going back to this code here which is for the how it works section let's make this white space even smaller here let me check how it looks so that I know what to change here So the most important thing is to reduce this here, right? So let's do that. So we don't need this. Probably 20 pixels is great and here also 20. We don't need so much white space. And one other thing I should do there is to reduce 
the circle in the work section so let's change this here maybe to 40 pixels and 40 pixels here as well or of course not change any of those change this to 15 pixels and also decrease the padding a little bit so make all of the things a little bit smaller okay something is not working here right now this base is still way too big okay that's because I misspelled <laughs> this right here okay now it looks better and I just need to change the font size in here and to of course put this image here in the center so font size 100% let's say 120 in fact and so where is that so this is for the image so the steps box first child I now want it to be centered all right let's just resize this a little bit whoa the image is so so incredibly big now so we better make that a little bit smaller again so where is that here it's app screen app screen and I'm gonna change that to 40 pixels okay looks like the correct size now all right so as I said I will let you tweak uh, other minor things here on the website uh, on your own with your own CSS but there's still one thing that I need to fix and it's this here you see these columns doesn't start at the same point right so the first column is different than this ones here and that is actually because I forgot to change one thing and it has to do here with the column and this comes actually from this grid file so all columns uh, have a margin which is this one let me copy it to our query CSS so that we can change it to what we want So currently we have a left margin of 1%, uh, 0% at the, at the right side, 1% bottom and 1.6 uh, on the left. So now we don't want anything of that. We want the margin to be 0 here, 0 on the right, and on the bottom is the only place we want some margin because we want, you know, we want some distance here between those boxes. So let me put this to 4% and this also to 0. And that will now fix this weird thing. Yeah, and this looks much better. Now we have some space here between the boxes. And they all start at the same place, right? So I think this looks cool now. And let's now look here at our last media query which is for really small screen sizes let me just put this here like actually can put it smaller than this and it still looks good in here so there's maybe not so much to change so all I'm gonna do is to make this form here a hundred percent wide and to remove even more padding between those sections because we have to imagine that it's a really small phone so let me just 
make some minor changes here in fact so I will say section padding we had 30 pixels let's say 25 now and 0 left and right and the contact form can have a width of 100% so I just didn't want to leave this um, empty but in fact it maybe was not so necessary but who knows maybe in your future websites you will actually need this media query so I'm going to reload this for the last time and so this is our website on a mobile phone so feel free to change some more stuff here on your own because now you know how all of this works but I'm gonna leave it as this so we are now done with the HTML and CSS part of our website actually so congratulations in the next lecture we will just uh, test this website on different browsers which is a very important aspect of uh, web design and web development. So, see you there. So far, we have developed our website and used the Google Chrome browser to see how it looks. In an ideal world, we would be able to create our site using everything we've learned so far and the website would look great in any browser. Now, unfortunately, each browser interprets HTML and CSS in a slightly different way, which means that a website may appear differently to visitors using different browsers. So, once we've created our website, we have to review how it appears on multiple browsers. This is very, very important. The most popular browsers right now are Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox and Safari. Here we have the worldwide market share of all browsers as of January 2015. And here we see that Google Chrome has almost 50% of the market share. Now, the first thing we have to do in order to make CSS3 work the same way in every browser is prefixing some CSS3 properties. And CSS browser prefixes are a way for browser makers to add support for new CSS features in a kind of testing period. Here are the CSS browser prefixes for different browsers. So it's a WebKit for Android, Chrome, iOS and Safari browsers, MOZ for Firefox, MS for Internet Explorer and O for Opera. And here is an example for the border radius property with different browser prefixes. With this code, the border radius property will work even on older browsers of Chrome or Firefox. Because the older versions of the modern browsers always cause the biggest problems to us web developers. Now, it seems a little bit boring to add all these prefixes manually, right? Good news is, we don't have to, because there is another great brackets extension that does the job for us. So let's go back to brackets and install it. So the extension we're going to install is called auto prefixer. So again hit here the extensions button and now right here we write auto prefixer. So then you hit install here. I already have it installed so I will not do it. So. I hope you have it installed by now and now it's very very easy. We just select all the code hitting command A or control A and then we come to this edit menu and down here we have auto prefix selection. So we hit that button and now all the relevant properties are prefixed. So let's scroll down here and see what we have for instance. So here the transition property was prefixed for WebKit. And this extension is actually pretty smart because it only prefixes the properties that need prefixing in each browser. So in this case all WebKit browsers such as Chrome, iOS, Android 
and Safari. So again, we have a WebKit transition and let me show what else we have. Here we have the transform property and this is for WebKit and for the Internet Explorer. So we see this is pretty smart here again and it helps us doing our job. And we should do the same here in this CSS file. So again, command A, and then we hit auto prefix selection. And to be absolutely sure, we can do the same here in our grid CSS file. I actually don't know if this is necessary, but we'll do it just to make sure. So, now all our code is prefixed. So we should now test our website on the four major browsers as I told you before. So Google Chrome here is obviously not necessary because we already know it works well with it since we used it all the time to test our website. So next up I have Safari. So this is the Google Chrome browser. Now I have Firefox. And so let me open my index HTML file with it. Alright, so this is Firefox and well we see that everything works exactly the way as it works in Google Chrome, right? So no problems here. Everything's fine. Great. And now I will test it on Safari as well. I have it open here actually. So it doesn't work this way, okay? So I will make open with uh, Safari. And here we go. Again, let's test it. Let's see if everything works. So all these animations work. All our effects and so things look a little different here. For instance, this box here looks different in Chrome, but that's nothing we could change. That's really something which has to do with the browser and operating systems. Now, for PC users, they, get, they cannot test their website on Safari because it only runs on a Mac. But maybe you can use a Mac from a friend or so and test if your web page looks good with the Safari browser. And then we have the Internet Explorer. And this time the Mac users have the problem because we cannot install the Internet Explorer on a Mac. So I will actually not be able to show you how it looks like on the Internet Explorer. So if you have a Mac and you want to test if your website looks good on an Internet Explorer, you can, for example, ask a friend of yours which has a Windows computer and see if your website looks great on the Internet Explorer as well. So actually on the newer versions of the Internet Explorer like 11 or 10, everything we did should look fine. The most problematic browsers are the older versions like Internet Explorer 6, 7 and 8. Because many of the modern CSS3 styles don't work on these browsers. They are still around, but for us web developers, hopefully not forever. And we will not concentrate so much on these older versions because that would require very specific techniques. And actually, there is a rather complex way of using the Internet Explorer on a Mac. And to find out more about that, check out the link in the ebook. Now, there are, however, some things that we can do in order to make some of the parts of our website work great in older web browsers. So we will use three JavaScript scripts to enable some of the new functionalities in older browsers. The first one, there is a little script called respond.js, which enables the browser to understand and execute CSS media queries, which we need for responsive web design. So let me close this. And there is this website, JS Deliver, 
where we can get uh, many scripts like that for free. More on that later in the next section. But for now let's just type respond. Okay, here we go. And hit integration. Then all we need to do is to copy this code and paste it at the bottom of our HTML file, right here. So really, after the body, we paste our script files. So again, we will learn more about JavaScript in the next lecture, but for now, let's just copy those scripts right here. So the second script I'm gonna use here is called HTML5 shift, and this enables us to use and style uh, HTML5 elements in all the browsers that were available before HTML5 actually existed. And this is pretty useful and we will include it just as we included respond before. So HTML5 shift. So click this and then the main version and paste it down here. And the last one, we will use Selective Visor or something like that. <laughs> I'll just type it here. Selective. That's right. So we will use this one, and this allows us to use CSS3 pseudo classes like Last Child and First Child on Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8. So these are just some of the things that you can do. There are many more, but these are some simple solutions. Now one very handy tool to see what exactly works on which browser is caniuse.com, which is this website. And in here we can just write CSS properties, and I did this with transform, and it shows us exactly where this works. So we see transform doesn't work in Internet Explorer 8. It works on 9 with the prefix ms and for 10 and 11 it works just fine without any prefix. So for Google Chrome for instance version 31 it needs the WebKit but from then we don't need that anymore. Or for Safari for instance it also needs the WebKit prefix or for the iOS Safari and our brackets extension already took care of that. So whenever we need to know if, an, if a CSS property works or not on a certain browser, we can use this very handy website. So for me, this part is the most boring part of the web developer work, working with all the browsers and looking what works and what doesn't. But well, we still have to do it because it is super important that we make our website work on as many browsers as possible. So, and with this lecture we close this section where we built the static part of our website project with HTML and CSS. And it is already great. Now, if you were not able to follow all the lectures or did not understand everything, you can download all the code for the entire project from the link in the description of this video. And as always, please feel free to ask your questions in the course forums. And then, when you're ready, join me in the next section about jQuery.